In your assignment for 1.2, we are asked to find the area of the given shape. The area of this figure is 19 square units. We need to ask ourselves, how do we find the area? Did you simply count the number of boxes? What is another strategy you could use to find the area of the shape besides just counting the boxes? What if we looked at the lengths and the widths of the figure and treated it as a square using the formula area equals length times width? There are five boxes and five boxes. Five boxes for the length times five boxes for the width would equal 25. But we know that can't be true since there are mixing, missing boxes in the upper right hand corner. We can find the area of that rectangle by multiplying the width by the length two times three to get six boxes. If we subtract six from 25, we get 19. Therefore, this figure has 19 square units as the area. In the task you did today, I rule, you compared two different functions, each one describing a different set of logos. Remember that not only do the tables have different properties, but the equations look different. In this section of your assignment, you will be comparing the area function of a rectangle with the perimeter function. For each figure provided, find the area and the perimeter. Remember that the formula for the area of a rectangle is length times width. And the formula for perimeter is 2 times the length plus 2 times the width. When you find the area of the rectangle, you don't need to simplify it. However, with the perimeter, you will need to simplify the expression and combine like terms. Let's calculate the area and perimeter for this figure. We will find the area by multiplying the length of x minus 1 in parentheses by the width which is the quantity x plus 5. Notice that the units will become inches squared because we are multiplying inches by inches. We can find the area without simplifying the expression. We will find the perimeter by multiplying 2 times the length plus 2 times the width. Notice that the units on the perimeter are inches since we are adding the dimensions and not multiplying them. We can simplify the expression so that the perimeter will give us 2x minus 2 when we distribute the 2 plus 2x plus 10. This gives us 4x plus 8 as the perimeter. You first learned about the greatest common factor in math 6 with numbers and later applied your understanding to terms with variables. In this section of your assignment, you will be finding the greatest common factor between two or more expressions, each with numbers and variables. Here is a quick refresher on greatest common factor. Remember that factors are numbers we can multiply together to get another number. For example, 2 and 3 are factors of 6, since 2 times 3 equals 6. When finding the greatest common factor for two or more numbers, you want to list all of the factors of each number. For 6, those factors are 1, 2, 3, and 6, since each of these numbers multiplied by some whole number will give you 6. Once you fi find all the factors of each number, you find the largest factor that they both have in common. This is called the greatest common factor. 
For example, if I wanted to find the greatest common factor of 6 and 27, I list the factors of 6 and the factors of 27, and I find the largest factor that they have in common. The greatest common factor of 6 and 27 is 3. When working with variables raised to powers, the GCF represents the largest number of factors that the variable's terms have in common. For example, if one expression is x to the fourth power and the other is x squared, the GCF is x squared since each expression contains at least two factors of x. Essentially, the GCF is the variable raised to the smallest exponent that appears in the terms. So let's try an example. Find the greatest common factor for 24xy squared and 10x cubed y squared times z. Let's start with the numbers. The factors of 24 are 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 8, 12, and 24. The factors of 10 are 1, 2, 5, and 10. The greatest common numerical factor between these two terms is 2. Next, we will look at the variables. x is the GCF of the x's, and y squared is the GCX f of the y's. Notice that the first term does not have a z in it. Since this term doesn't have this variable in common, the GCF of the expression won't have a z either. The GCF of the two expressions is 2xy squared. 